If you would like to help support these beautiful big cats, please visit ExoticFelineRescueCenter.org. A lot of the cats you see out here are incredibly friendly. Unfortunately, people mistake friendly for safe. No matter how friendly these animals are, they are all incredibly dangerous. These animals will kill you because they like you. On this episode of Joe's Big Cat Kingdom, a group of volunteers from the Peter Emily International Veterinary Dental Foundation have stopped by to provide these big cats with much needed oral care. And we have a new update about the baby bobcat that was rescued last season. <laughs> the Exotic Feline Rescue Center was founded by Joe Taft in 1991 to help protect abused and mistreated exotic felines. With the illegal trade of these big cats increasing at an alarming rate in North America, the center has grown from three big cats in 15 acres to over 200 exotic felines and more than 100 acres of property. I'm tired, I'm angry, I'm worried, but I'm never bored. Welcome to Joe's Big Cat Kingdom. <laughs> The first tiger we're gonna do this morning is Caesar. And this is a canine tooth that he broke about two months ago. Uh, so he's been on amoxicillin and a mild pain reliever. Uh, and now we're gonna fix him. Peter Emily International Veterinary Dental Foundation was founded in 2005 as a private charitable foundation. Their mission is to provide life-improving advanced veterinary dental care to exotic animals. Since their inception, they have gone on more than 50 missions and helped over 300 exotic animals. The Peter Emily International Veterinary Dental Foundation, which is an organization that's been around for Almost a decade, I think about eight years, um, to where we go around and we are sort of veterinary dentists without borders. So we come and we help these exotic animals of all, of all shapes and sizes and types um, with their oral care. So we all pay our own ways. I mean, we, none of us gets paid for our expertise here. We're all here, we fly, we fly in from all over the country. We pay for our room, board, all of that, our rental cars, and we're here to help the animals because um, all animals, including domestic dogs and cats, um, if they have oral pain, they never tell anybody because in the wild, if you have a bad day, it's not a good thing and you may be ostracized or you may be killed. So they are left to deal with the hand they're dealt and suffer in silence. But I think we have six tigers and one lion and one mountain lion. Caesar arrives at the on-site medical facility. A team of anesthesiologists from Illinois University will be on-site to keep the exotic cats comfortable and safe during their oral procedures. Uh, my job and my role, I'm actually keeping these guys uh, stably asleep, <laughs> keeping them from biting anybody's fingers, stuff like that, uh, and uh, keeping everybody safe, keeping the cat's blood pressures, vitals in a normal place. So yeah. We have three technicians, two interns, and our anesthesiologist here today. So and, uh, We've been affiliated with these guys for mm, probably close to 15 years, if I understand right. Uh, before I started working there, uh, there's already a pretty good working relationship with our faculty and uh, Joe here, so, yeah. The dentists from the Peter Emily Foundation begin their inspection of Caesar. They use a handheld x-ray machine to get a full look at all his teeth. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, this is Zoe. She's an 11 year old cougar that came from, an Ohio, from Ohio and she has a broken canine. We saw a broken canine, and usually when we see that, they find eight million other things wrong in there, and they fix them up, and they're good to go after that. We see them, you know, they'll yawn, they'll make the, the stink face, um, whatever, if they growl at us for any reason, we're always checking their teeth all the time. So whenever they do that, we're immediately looking in their mouths, and we, she yawned one day, and we saw a broken canine. The dentists work in two teams, conducting multiple procedures at a time. This allows for the most oral procedures possible while limiting the amount of time the animals are under anesthesia. We have two teeth that are fractured, and so now we have, uh, at the same time, two root canals are being being uh, performed. Probably one tooth is going to be finished probably about half the time as the other one, uh, probably about an hour, what we'd expect. Dr. Hall oversees the second team as they inspect Zoe. They decide to perform a root canal on her broken canine in order to save the tooth. What they're doing is cleaning out any remnants of the pulp um, so there's no live tissue. Make sure we can get our bleach and things like that in there so um, we can get it cleaned out because that's where your root canals are going to fail is when we don't get them out completely cleaned out or the bacteria have some access into them. We're, we're irrigating and then we're going to dry the canal and then we'll put in, a, we'll obturate or seal the canal with a, a cement. Okay. So we're working at, uh, at lengths of, uh, of 70 millimeters and mine's about 34 millimeters. An average human tooth is only about 21 to 25 millimeters. So much longer on this uh, on this tiger. <laughs> Chris, yeah. once we Meanwhile, on the other side of the center, the keepers are busy with the morning feedings. Thank you. Okay, somebody oh. get that one. Somebody, oh, I got what, another what's, one. what's so the problem? Somebody go for it. Good job, Jackie. Way to take initiative. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Shamar? Come on, Shamar. In there, there's a leg. All right, why are you hitting him? Why would you do that? Get. He was on his way out, come on. You come and get this chunk. Scarlet, now, out, go get the head. Come on, you're the one that hit him. So if he got, looked at you, that's your own fault. Thank you. Stop. Go get your food. Go on, go, come on. Come on, Cash. Come on. Come on. Come on, buddy. Get down. Get down, Cash. She did not reapply her sunscreen. Here, let me just let me soothe it. Anybody care? No, no, no. You will do it. Oh, we have a blast. Whenever the girls are together, we have a blast. These these girls are not only um, my coworkers, but they're some of my best friends. And so there's never a day where we're not finding a reason to smile and joke around with each other and have fun. We always have fun with the cats. I mean, you would think that it's all of our first day here because we can look over at a cat and be like, oh my gosh, that's so cute, look at that. And we just have a blast together. And um, that's how it always is, uh, day in and day out. You know, there's, there's times where it's a little more stressful or whatever, but we always try to keep it light to keep our mood up, but they're the best people to work around. Come here, yeah. have a little treat while you wait. She's such like a little pig. She's like immediately snorting. <laughs> Lazy bones, get up. I don't know why you didn't eat, but you need to eat these. Oh yeah, just slowly paw at them. No, you need to eat them, not just put your paw on them. Oh gosh, now they're covered in straw, good job. Good girl, way to take them at least. Good girl, Cheyenne. We have a lot of fun. Obviously, we've got a lot to do safety-wise, um, so we, we're always checking on each other for safety reasons, um, but when we're not verifying each other um, for slide gates and locks and things like that, uh, when we're in there 
picking up poop and finding old bones and things like that. We're all joking around, uh, laughing, talking about who knows what. <laughs> we could be talking about anything. So uh, we have a great time out here, um, not just with the cats, also with each other. Uh, we've got a pretty strong bond. Um, we all rely on each other pretty heavily uh, for safety reasons. Um, so for that, that reason, we are very close. Yeah. yeah. Supervisor, the new head keeper is ready for you. <laughs> all right, I'll be right there. Oh, oh sorry, head keeper, I got Why you. Yeah, okay. I know. It's scrubby wet, there you go. I'm very sorry for that. Do I get written up? Hi, Rosie. Uh, this is Blaze and Samson. So right now, Samson's in front of Blaze. Uh, these two have a tendency to get a little feisty around food time. When they see the food truck, they start yelling at each other. God, he was almost in. Hey. That was all you, Samson. Blaze, back it on in here. Blaze. Blaze, back it in. Blaze. Blaze. I would like to have a little bit of quiet over here. Go. Blaze. Hey, right here. Blaze, come on. All right, come on. Quick. Blaze, Blaze, come on. Hurry it up, Blaze. Hurry it up. Get in here. Come on. That's the thing. Blaze is trying to go. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hurry, Blaze. Come on, you're almost here. All right. All right. All right. Hurry, Blaze. Come on. Blaze, hurry. Hurry. Go at it that way. I don't care. They're going to stay there for a while. Um, usually, as soon as they're fed, they each have a piece of food. We make sure we have something for each of them, um, and they'll go in their boxes and just kind of leave each other alone. Um, so they'll do this for a while. They'll yell at each other. It's mostly just talk. Uh, occasionally, they'll get a little scratch or something like that, and then one of them will go in a box and, and pout for the rest of the day. Uh, but it's a pretty common occurrence. They're fine, as you can see. Oh. The dentists from the Peter Emily Foundation finish the root canals on the first two patients. Recovery time is pretty much zero as far as root canal goes. There's, there's no long-term care associated with it, so it's better than she was two hours ago. Uh, this is Mr. Bigglesworth. He's one of our African servals, and um, he has a broken tooth. We came in one day and found his face, half of his face totally puffy, he couldn't open his eye, all kinds of bad stuff going on with infection, so we immediately treat them with antibiotics and pain, pain meds, and then when the swelling went down, we could see a broken tooth. Oh, it's okay, Biggs. We're, we're peeing. It's okay, bud. Now, don't go in the box. Do you go in the box? Yep. There's a shovel on the ground in there, just so I have something in case he decides to get real mad. Okay, okay, poke him if you can. Comes after me, I'll just, you know. Okay, all right, time. What's that? Yeah, please. The team of anesthesiologists from Illinois University prepare Mr. Bigglesworth for his oral procedure. This is Hope. She's a little five-year-old tiger from Virginia. Um, we saw a broken tooth on her, and it, we're going to be able to take this opportunity to good look, get a good look. All right, little nugget. It's time for a Joe's Big Cat Kingdom update. Last season, a two-week-old injured bobcat cub was found near the center by two mushroom hunters. Joe is not licensed to rehab local wildlife, so he is called on the help of Wild Care, Inc., an organization from Bloomington, Indiana, that provides professional care to sick, injured, and orphaned wildlife indigenous to Indiana. 
Dr. Froderman performed emergency hernia surgery on the cub. It's all healthy. It does look healthy, but we're going to need to make it whole. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That lymph node is going to be in the way. Wild bobcats have one, two, six. I mean, they can't even have more than that. But average litters are two, sometimes three. They can have more. But a mother has to leave babies for a significant part of the day to be out hunting to get food to keep the whole family supported. So with his hernia, he would have been in a lot of pain, which means he'd be vocalizing a lot more than the other siblings. Normally, bobcat kittens, especially at his age, he was just under a week when he was found, are pretty much silent when mom leaves to go hunting because they can't defend themselves at all at that age, so their survival relies on being quiet and not being found by predators while she's gone. If he was crying all of the time, he would have put the rest of the litter at risk, so she probably had to make the tough call that she could lose her entire group of babies if she didn't abandoned this one, so he was taken away from the den and left in the middle of the woods. This is little Shiloh back here, and he had the, the hernia surgery uh, that Wild Care brought over here so that Dr. Froderman could help with it, and he's doing great. Uh, unfortunately, um, he had gotten another infection, and they had to handle him a lot to give him the meds, which then made him imprint, so he couldn't go back out to the wild. And as you can see back here, this little boy turned into, from eight months of zero human contact, turned into like the sweetest little thing in the world. He's just the cutest little boy. He really likes attention, and he seems just really happy, like he'd be happy no matter where he was. The team from the Peter Emily Foundation have their hands full with Mr. Bigglesworth. We have the four canine teeth which are fractured. Three of them can be saved with a root canal. One of them has to be removed. There's also two of the very small little incisors that are right there in the front that are also broken that need to be removed as well. They're just too small to save. The anesthesia time is not worth it to save those. So we have a total of three extractions to do. These particular extractions shouldn't be too complicated. This animal is very similar to the size of many of our dogs that we do in, in our regular general practices or dental specialty practices so I am gonna uh, have the human dentist do it today so it'll be a little bit different for her but the uh, this should be pretty straightforward I would say. Dr. Hall and his team are finished with their assessment on hope and have decided on the necessary oral procedures. The right side was good left side we've got complicated crown root fracture of the lower left canine tooth um, we're going to do radiographs, and if that's all we find, we'll do a root canal on that, and we'll do um, have do some periodontal surgery, uh, type 1 crown lengthening to reduce the gum tissue so we can have a good healthy tooth and have healthy gum tissue around it for later. They never get bloody, although she's never had the fungus before. Maybe it's a scrape, though. It could be. It could be. Let's keep an eye on it. Uh, we're just seeing a wound, or a mark on her side, and we're not sure if it's, we have a fungus that kind of comes through here when it's real wet out in the spring and the fall. Um, we're not sure if it's that or if it's an actual wound from playing or biting or whatever. All right, Tigger Rui, Raj, you stay over here. Tigger, get around your brother. Get, no, get around your brother. Go on. Come on, go around your brother. Go. Tigger, go. Come on. Come on, Tigs. Look. Tiggies, move your butt. Come on. Come on, you're, you're, look at you shedding. You look like you're a molting bird. Come on. Let's go. What we're gonna do for one of our groups of tigers, we do this for a lot of the cats, um, but for one of this, these groups in particular, they really love it when you spray perfume all over um, their stuff. So we're gonna spray it all along the base of the tree and some of their logs in their cage. Um, and it's just a form of, en of enrichment for them. It's one of the few forms that we can actually do here. Um, and they love it. Uh, we'll spray it all over the logs and you'll go see them run out there and uh, rub all over the logs and all over the trees and just have a blast with it. People give us old perfumes or body sprays or something like that. And we're gonna spread it all along, or spray it out on all this stuff here so that the cats can come out here and sniff it and get some enrichment. It's very difficult for us to enrich our cats because they get a lot of enrichment every day with their food. We feed them bone-in food, which in, is actually a form of enrichment, but they get it every day. 
So we've tried things. Uh, we tried put box, to put boxes in their cages and they walk around it like, can you please get this garbage out of my cage? Um, we've built snowmen. They walk around the snowman to get to their food. Uh, it's just really difficult because they're really happy with everything out here on a regular basis. This is one of the very few things that we can do that also doesn't require a lot of cleanup. Oh. All right, guys. Go Tiger Tiger. Go at it. Come on, Tigger. Come on, guys, let's go. Three, four. Tiggerooey, let's go. Oh, it's the crap. Yeah, one more. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait until one starts rolling. They're rubbing on Mau Mau. Oh, oh my gosh. It's so good. Well, we just finished the root canal. It's beautiful. Um, now we did the whole restoration, everything like that. We're waiting for the final uh, radiograph image to come up. And Dr. Dyer, our human dentist, is doing some periodontal surgery to reduce the uh, gum tissue where the fracture went below the gum line. So everything will be nice and happy and hope we'll have a healthy mouth. Mr. Bigglesworth is almost done with the last extractions. That's about 10 seconds. I can push a little further apical. Twist again. Yeah, just get it past the uh, get it past the neck of the tooth. There you go. I twist a little yeah, and pull toward you. Ta-da! There it is. Beautiful. Yeah, there's a perforation. All in all, everything went really well. Um, so three teeth we could fix, three teeth we could keep with root canal therapy, uh, three teeth we had to extract. Um, so unfortunately, we, we, we'd rather keep teeth, but those are ones that had to, had to go in the trash can. Uh, so one being a canine tooth and a more important tooth, and the other two are small incisors. I think soft food for a few days and, and uh, some antibiotics a little bit longer, some pain medication. He should feel a whole lot better though when he starts to wake up. Um, I think in the next week he'll feel better than he has in a long time. Uh, it's going pretty well. Um, the cats so far that have had surgery, it seems to have gone pretty well. Uh, we haven't lost anybody. That's always a great day. Um, but, you know, they're getting their teeth fixed and they'll all be feeling so much better later on. So it's a great day so far. This is my ninth time here and, I mean, it went wonderful. Everything went perfect. All the animals are doing well. They, I mean, the anesthesias went well. The animals are in, well, two of them are in recovery. The other two were finishing, I mean, we just finished with Hope. They're finishing up on the serval. Um, the, the other group is working on. And again, another wonderful day here at the Exotic Feline Rescue Center. <laughs> Next time on Joe's Big Cat Kingdom, the dentists from the Peter Emily International Veterinary Dental Foundation are back for another full day of Big Cat Dentistry. And we get an update on Brooke, the female lioness who had colon surgery earlier in the season.